And it's uh, nearly 50 years since Turkey took control of the north of Cyprus and the island remains split to this day and divisions continue between the Greek and Turkish Cypriot communities. Well, those divisions provide the backdrop to a new novel by the British-Turkish novelist Elif Shafak called The Island of Missing Trees. And uh, she joins me now. I'm very glad to say very good to talk to you and got to explain uh, the title. Uh, are all the trees really missing in Cyprus? Um, well, in some ways they are. Of course, Cyprus is such a beautiful island with beautiful people, but at the same time, it's a, it's an island of unhealed wounds, um, stories, but also silences. Uh, and I think I wanted to talk about roots. How does it feel to be uprooted? Um, and and lament also the loss of trees and this ecological crisis that is very much part of the human history and story. And at the centre of the novel is uh, is a, a love story, and with, with you mentioned roots with almost traditional roots, there are elements of Romeo and Juliet about it, love across the divide. Indeed, in, 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 in a way there is, because there's Kostas, who is Greek, um, Christian, the Greek Cypriot, and there's Defne, who is uh, Turkish Cypriot, Muslim. So they, they do come from different backgrounds. And there's Ada, their child, who has been uh, named after the island of Cyprus, but she has never been there. I think I wanted to tackle intergenerational memory, trauma, how the stories and silences in our families shape us. Um, but as at the same time, I wanted to see if hope is possible, coexistence and peace is possible. And in order to arrive there, I think we need to take a broader look at the story. And speaking in the voice of the trees, I hope gave me that, that angle that I needed. And it has such relevance, of course, to modern day Cyprus, but uh, beyond, there are, there are so many communities, even within Europe, that face such divisions. I sincerely hope and believe that, you know, many people coming from very different backgrounds, but similarly troubled histories, complex histories, can relate to this book. I have met lots of immigrant families, families in exile, where the first generation, of course, they have under, you know, they, they went through the, the biggest difficulties and they carry the memories of those obstacles. Um, but perhaps they don't know how to talk about it. And then the second generation is busy belonging, finding their feet, and they don't want to talk about the past as much. But then there's the third, fourth generation, the youngest in these families, who are keen to learn more about their identity, the stories and the trajectories of their ancestors. So it's very interesting to, to meet young people with older memories or curiosity for the past, and as you pointed out, there are many divided lands, there are many lands of partition and families coming from such backgrounds all around the world. And Elif, while you're with us, I can't not ask you about these terrible scenes we're seeing from Turkey at the moment, these wildfires that are affecting so many parts of the country. I mean, your thoughts about those and maybe some thoughts as well about the government's seeming unpreparedness for it all, no firefighting aircraft turning down... Uh, help from other nations. What do you make of it all? Yes, it's absolutely, it's just heartbreaking, you know, and also it's so frustrating, this sense of helplessness that many people right now are feeling in Turkey because these wildfires are destroying homes, lives, entire ecosystems, and the government has been completely incompetent. If you voice this immediately, you are regarded as a traitor or, you know, accused of betrayal. Um, I think this is an important moment also for international cooperation and support and, and help. But it's also a moment of awakening, not only in Turkey, across the world, to understand how climate change is real. It is happening day by day in front of our eyes. So there is the governmental incompetence on the one side and this bigger picture of um, our climate crisis on the other hand. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, video that was released today with the screams of animals who are dying in the in the wildfires. Entire natural habitats are being destroyed in Turkey. It's, it's utterly heartbreaking. It really is. Do you have any family or, or friends who are, are being affected by it? 
of course, I have um, family and friends, especially Marmaris, Bodrum, you know, every day I correspond, I talk to them. People are terrified and, and they're not getting enough help. They are trying to save their homes at the same time, the trees. There's, a, there's utter chaos at the moment. I don't know if you want to get into it, but do you think that uh, Recep Erdogan's government, his regime, actually takes climate change seriously enough? I do not think they take climate change seriously enough. Also, I don't think they take the civil society seriously, you know. Um, Turkey, as you know, has become more authoritarian over the years. It has become more nationalist, more of religious fundamentalism. That is not the way forward. What we need is a proper, you know, pluralistic democracy in which diversity, there is diversity and equality. So. Uh, unfortunately, whether it's climate or, or the civil society or democracy or, or rule of law or freedom of speech, there's a lot that we need to talk about when we talk about Turkey. Elif, it has been fantastic talking to you. Thank you so much for covering so much ground in our, our short time available. Best of luck with the novel, The Island of Missing Trees. Elif Shafak there. Thank you for having me.